So welcome to News Beast. I'm John Avalon with Peter Boyer, author of this week's cover story in Newsweek. I will prevail, presenting the gladiatorial <laughs> combat currently yes. going on in Florida between Mitt I Romney. drew that picture, too, by I the thought, way. I thought, yeah. did you conceive of that? Do you think? Because <laughs> i got to say, Newt's nipple is a little, throws me yeah, off. I don't know that the I, world needs to see I vowed to become the first uh, Newsweekly uh, uh, writer to actually have a nipple on the cover, and, and I've succeeded. And you've succeeded. So just really hang it up right now. Yeah. Kind of done. So at some point, we will rewrite Spartacus with all the Republican contenders yeah, we, in that. We did rewrite Spartacus. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> all right, but so um, let's get it. Let's get into your, your interview with Romney, which is very revealing. He's been avoiding press avails generally, so mm -hmm. the fact he was able to sit down is pretty significant. Here, here's what kind of gets me about, about Romney. You know, I just got back to Florida, negative ads running nonstop TV, radio, yeah. but he's a very moral guy. He's a decent human being. Has he struck a balance within himself that he's willing to campaign dirty in order to have the opportunity to govern clean? He is willing to pick up a club and uh, beat his opponents upside the head until they are bloody. Um, and is that just because this is the business we have chosen? Is that sort of the division? Yeah, it order? is. I mean, the funny thing, listen, I, I, I think when he's in default mode, he doesn't do that. He does it when it's necessary. You, you saw between New Hampshire and sure. South Carolina, he didn't do it. You know, he was going to mass rallies and, you know, saying the you know, red, white, and blue and saying his, uh, you know, his... America's his, a beautiful stump yes. speech, yeah. Uh, God bless him. <laughs> Um, you know, wearing his mom jeans out on the, oh, on the yeah. his, his campaign jeans, as I call them, uh, and it, and he got hammered. Uh, the question going into Florida was actually, anybody can have enough dough to buy a thermonuclear carpet bombing negative ad campaign. He has mm -hmm. enough dough. He did it. The question is, the question was going into Florida, could he personally stand toe to toe and hammer uh, his opponent? Uh, I mean, I think we saw the Gingrich rationale disappear in Florida because his rationale was only I can do that with Obama, and Romney did not hesitate. That's and great. He can do it. So let me, let me ask you this. One of the, I think, themes of the piece is people forget that Romney was the conservative candidate last time yeah. around. He was the backing of Laura Ingram, Rush Limbaugh. I mean, you make the point that two things have changed. The Tea Party and then also Obamacare has taken an idea yes. of mandates that was originally a Heritage Foundation idea and made it, you know, the second coming of Vladimir Lenin. Um, but does he, does he feel a sense of, of, of betrayal or, or, or thinks it's sort of surreal that former advocates like Laura Ingram, who introduced him at the CPAC speech, yes. and Rush Limbaugh are now among his biggest critics? I'll be honest with you. If you'd asked me that question about Newt, uh, I'd be able to tell you because... Um, Newt, uh, I've known for a long time, and even if I hadn't, you ask him something about his feelings and he'll let you know. <laughs> I think it is possible that Ann Romney knows what is actually going on inside of uh, uh, Mitt's heart and head, um, <laughs> but, but I have no clue, and I don't think any of the people, who, even those who are running his campaign, know if he's bearing resentment and all. Then I asked him, he, you know, he blows it off and says, no, nah, no, nah, this, you know, this is politics, this, this is, is politics. part of the game. I do think, though, that he has noticed and, he, and here's sort of the takeaway. I do think he has noticed that after six years of running for president, that his, the people he has to convince, the people he has to overcome, the impediment uh, to his presidential am, am, ambition uh, is the right. And the right changes. You know, yeah. the right was for him for a few minutes when he seemed, you know, more like them than McCain seemed. But as you say, John, the party has been transformed by, uh, by the Tea Party uprising. And uh, I think he knows that these folks are, he's going to have to convince them, even into the White House. It, it always seemed to me that one of the things, his, his enormous reticence is maybe overlearning lessons of his father, who mm -hmm. was loose lipped to, loose -lipped to the point where he said he'd been brainwashed on Vietnam and was criticized at the time for kind of speaking off the cuff. So you've got a very disciplined guy. But his family's political legacy is decidedly part of that progressive Republican yeah. tradition. I mean, and that's why he's seen as the establishment. I mean, he has yes. a lineage here. He's been certainly running away from that ever since he started running for president. Yes. But there was an interesting, I don't know if it was a slip or a reveal in the interview that I haven't seen before, where he said, he did not hesitate, I think were your words, to say that he would appoint a gay or lesbian Supreme Court justice as long as they were strict constructionists. Yes, I mean, that's, that's interesting. And by the way, I'm not sure how long that list of, of potential right, nominees right, right. is. It may be quite long, I don't know, but I guarantee you we he's, he's, he's pouring over it if it, if it is. I think that I, I think that's actually how he feels. I mean, I think that's who he is. I, he, it may be a political calculation. Oh crap! I did this in Massachusetts. Like, so if I do, that, I'll be another flip flopper. If I say now, I don't think that's it. I think he is committed to, which is part of the advantage to him of having the right nipping at his heels, 
you know, he's committed himself to a Scalia-type uh, uh, model for sure. judicial appointments. And, you know, I think that it wouldn't matter to him if it's a gay person. I've not heard him say that before. No, but, neither have I. I think it actually is a really interesting, uh, you know, bit of news that's sort of in the article uh, among, among many pieces. Let me ask you this. Final question. You know, there is this enduring question. You know, is he just a salesman who has to make a different sale to win the nomination? Um, or, or was the Romney that ran for governor in 2002 the real Romney? Or was that just a sales job that he needed to do to get the governorship? Who is the real Romney? Is he the last Republican yeah. progressive? Or is he a traditionalist by faith extending those beliefs into the arena of politics? I think that latter is actually the case. It's a very good question. It's a question we won't really know, actually. Won't be able to answer with any uh, degree of actual certainty until unless he becomes elected president and he's been in office. I think it is the case that he is dispositionally, if you will, by, by his nature, by his aspect, a traditionalist slash conservative figure. Um, I don't think like his daddy, who was much more a born politician, you know, yeah. who was a, more of a hail fellow well met. I don't think he's that. I think he succeeded in private equity for a reason. You know, he's, he's inward. He, he has a poker face. He worries. He frets. He doesn't go home and have a martini afterwards to sort of, you know, take off the edge. Uh, I think that he is, he is sort of constitutionally a conservative figure who that was happy to adapt himself to whatever it required to get elected in Massachusetts. And if it turns out that I've got to be a conservative now to, because I think he is. I mean, I, I don't think he is, an, I don't think he's an ideologue, uh, but I yeah. put it this way. I don't think that he finds the program of the right abrasive. All right, Peter Boyer, author of I Will Prevail, this week's cover story in Newsweek. It's great to see you, man. Good to see you, John. All right.